before I get into the implications, I'm going to pause here and let you come in, let us talk, and I'm sure as we converse, as we talk, as we clarify, as we amplify, we will uh, get more understandings and see the implications. Talk to me, somebody. What have you understood? What have you learned so far? Uh, Sister Lisa, can you direct the conversation, the questions, answers for me, please? Members of the church who have done this before, and you have seen this presentation, I'm going to call upon you to ask some relevant questions. Don't sit there and look at me. Ask some questions so people who can get clarifications can get clarifications. You have been doing this a thousand times over, so now don't let me shame. It's your witnessing activity to ask a question to help somebody to learn. Not for yourself alone, but ask so someone can get to learn. So come on, members of the class, my students will tell you one of the things I hate is having to talk to people and they sit down on the back and me dumb. Talk to me, somebody. You don't agree with me. You agree with me. You like what I say. You don't like what I say. You learn something. This is worship. Praise the Lord. I can't eat for you. Eat for yourself. Okay, here we go, and we don't so, have all day. Are you hearing me, sir? Yes, yes I'm hearing Candace, you. you can go ahead. Okay, just wanted some clarity based on mm -hmm. what you were saying. Um, so the scripture says that you're justified by the faith. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're, what you're proposing, because I know that some person says faith in Jesus or faith of Jesus. So, mm -hmm. based on what you have just discussed, is it that you're saying it can be both or it is just faith of Jesus? No, what I'm saying is it cannot be both. Because your faith in Jesus is weak, is limited, is imperfect. Your faith in Jesus finds its expression in your good works. Therefore, if you say you are justified by your faith in Jesus, you are actually saying you are justified by your good works. And that's what Paul was hitting against. Therefore, Paul used the subjective genitive there. And if we had translated and understood the text properly, we would have heard Paul saying, you are justified by Jesus' faithfulness, not by your faith in Jesus. Your faith, yes, has a part to play in terms of accepting your justification. But your act of accepting is not the meritorious cause of your justification. It's not the basis. That's if I present, if, if I give you a million dollars in the bank and you go to the bank and draw the money by faith, your drawing of the money is not what caused me to give you the money. Is that what deposited the money? Is that really the big thing? Is my putting the money there? So what the scripture is doing, what Paul is doing here, is making a distinction between my faith in Christ and Jesus' faith. And Paul is saying, that our acceptance before God, the basis why God accepts us, is because of what Jesus did on the cross, plus a minus nothing. That's the reason why in the verse it says, we are justified by the faith of Jesus apart from works of law. And works of law there would be our faith means, because anytime you say faith, it means action. It's an action word. Okay, that's, that's a long that little faith, answer. I faith, hope it helps somewhat. Uh, that, faith, that, we, that faith that we have in him, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but um, is it that faith, because when you speak, I said faith comes by hearing, and hearing mm -hmm. by the word of God. That mm -hmm. faith that I'm able to have in Jesus, is it that 
created as a result of uh, him producing that, uh, enabling me to have faith in him? Yes. It, it, I mean, it comes from him. It, 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 it is enabled by him. It's a gift from him. But the basis of our salvation, that which God used as the means of our acceptance, is not so much what is not what God is doing in us. It's okay. what God has done outside of us in Jesus. Okay, but that is the clarity that I wanted because at the end of mm -hmm. the day, it is even though it is imperfect and we're going through the process, mm -hmm. but it is it is He that is still working in us. Yes, it is He that is working in us. But the, our confidence, our assurance, our acceptance before God is not based on what he is doing in us. Okay. Because what he's doing in us is always in process. Today you're good, tomorrow you're bad. You're always up and down. Therefore, if God is going to use what he's doing in you, your faith, the very faith that he's producing in you, if he's going to use that as a means to accept you, today I accept you, tomorrow I reject you. Today I accept you, tomorrow I reject you. Point. Understood. However, Understood. what God did was use the faithfulness of Jesus. I understand, mm -hmm. sir. So everything as the means you. of uh, accepting. Thank you very much for the question, Sister Candice. Because a lot of people have that same question. And I went at length because I know it's on others' minds, you know. And I'm going to come back to this theme again. Because, you know, I, I could put some more things in the study, but it was getting too long. Because what we've got to understand, and it's probably the same, beloved. Jesus is the new humanity. That is, when Jesus lived right, we were all living right. As a matter of fact, the Bible predicts Jesus has been the recapitulation, the newness of everything in the Old Testament. So he's a new Adam, he's a new Moses, he's a new Joshua, he's a new Elijah, he's a new David, he's a new Israel coming out of Egypt, he's a new Exodus, he's a new humanity. So everything that he did, it was if we were doing it. So when he had faith in God, we were having faith in God. And when he met God's covenant and requ covenant's requirement perfectly, he said, we met it perfectly. So now we just attach our little faith to him because in him, God is well pleased with the baptism. And so our little faith attached to him. But we don't turn around and say, wow, look what God is doing in me. And because he's doing these wonderful things in me, he's preaching in me, he's healing in me. I'm worshiping on the right day. I'm worshiping on this time. I am giving on my money. Therefore, I am accepted. All of those are good things. All of those are faith acts. But Paul and the New Testament are saying, those faith acts are not good enough for your acceptance with God, not good enough for your justification. Your justification is based, your acceptance, your salvation is based on what God did outside of you in Christ. Next question. Our contribution. Next question. Yes. yes Sister Candice. Elder Moses. Okay, Elder Moses. Okay. Yes. Good, good. Uh, good morning. Morning, Elder Lyndon. Yes. So yeah, you have just mentioned that Jesus is the new everything. Yes. Are you suggesting then that the Mosaic law is done away with? <laughs> One of these days, we're going to have a study on Jesus, the new law. <laughs> what are we going to come, we're going to come to Galatians chapter 3. Paul says exactly that the entire Mosaic law, the entire old covenant, everything is abolished. No good. And Paul says like in chapter 4, it's Agar. In chapter 3, 21, it's a, it is a slave lead, it's a slave guide. And Paul said the whole thing is in a way with. When Paul said circumcision is wrong, that's what Paul was saying. 
because circumcision stood for the entire law. Now, when you say this, you know, there are some people who hear you to say, all laws is abolished and you can't do anything. You can't lie. You can't kill. You can't steal. Have mercy, Jesus. I explained that thousand and one time. That is very elementary thinking. Yes, Paul said the entire law is abolished. And Paul also said the entire law is established. He said both. In Romans chapter 3, he said, shall we continue in sin that grace never born? No, we establish the law. In Colossians chapter 3, he said that the law is a, is a ministry of death. It has been abolished. The law is abolished. The law is established. What was Paul talking about? The law in a particular packaging. That is, in the sign that the covenant has been abolished. However, the law as radiates through Jesus, the new law is established. So we now have a new guide, a new system, a new constitution. So a particular configuration of law has been abolished. It doesn't mean that our laws is abolished. Because the law is now re-established in Jesus. And catch this now. The law that is established in Jesus, has been re-established in Jesus, is not one and the same as the laws that points to Jesus. The laws that point to Jesus, give a few examples. An animal was the means of atonement. The law coming out of Jesus. Who is your atoning sacrifice? Jesus, a person or somebody. The law that points to Jesus. A priest, a sinful human priest, was your priest. The law coming out of Jesus. Jesus is your priest. The law that points to Jesus. Circumcision was something done... On the eighth days, to males alone, the laws that emanates from Jesus, both males and females have to circumcise. Colossians chapter 2, but the circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. The laws that points to Jesus, thou shalt not kill, meant do not kill your fellow Israelites. The law coming out of Jesus is saying, do not even get angry. And I can take all the Ten Commandments. Every single law. And when you match them up, when they come out of Jesus, coming out of Jesus, it's transformed. It, it, it is magnified. It's more demanding. So when I say the law is abolished, I am not saying that you are lawless. I'm saying that you have more law to keep. Because the law is pointing to Jesus. It's baby stuff. The law upon Jesus said, one uh, every the firstborn child in the family is holy. The law upon Jesus said, every picnic is holy. And for those who don't understand the word, picnic is the Jamaican for child. Uh, the law pointing to Jesus is saying that uh, a particular place is holy. The law coming out of Jesus said, every God place where Jesus is, where one or two are gathered, is a holy place. The law pointing to Jesus, I will touch this and come back to it. The law pointing to Jesus says, one seventh of your time is holy. The law coming out of Jesus said, that was baby stuff. That was simplistic stuff. You're joking with the business. It's not one seventh of the time is holy. It's seven seventh. And Paul was so serious about that. Paul used the in Christ motive, the in Christ motive, 164 times throughout his writing. Paul said everything in Christ. We live in Christ. We walk in Christ. We, 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 we communicate in Christ. We even die in Christ. Because you now live in the Christ bubble. So holy times become even more holy in Christ. Ah, 
Some people complaining that Dr. Paul will eat it against the Sabbath. I'm not eating against the Sabbath. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm saying that if you're going to Exodus 20 for your Sabbath keeping, you're not keeping God's law properly. You're at the baby stage. Come up. Ella Lyndon, thank you for that answer. You sort of set me off, but I said, God, thank you very much. <laughs> we still have a little bit more time. Clarifications. Go ahead, Sister McLean. Go ahead, Sister McLean. Maybe your mic is muted. Is she muted? Mm -hmm. No, she's not muted, but uh, her, okay. her mic needs to be activated. Sister Andrea, in the meantime, wishes to speak. Sister Andrea, Go ahead, please come Sister in. Andrea. Okay, thanks very much. Um, just a question then. If we are uh, saved by faith of Jesus Christ, instead mm -hmm. of faith in Jesus Christ, what does that say to the person who is currently outside of Christ? Is that person already saved? Or is there something that he or she needs to do in order to attain that salvation that is of Jesus? You, know, you, you, you ask two questions. Jesus, yeah. You ask two questions in one. Mm -hmm. You ask two questions in one. By the way, your dress is looking very nice. Wonderful. <laughs> looking very good. That's my wife, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, your first question is, if we are saved by the faith of Christ, huh, then does that mean that everybody is saved? The simple answer to that is yes and no. Yes, in the sense that Every single human being is wrapped up in Jesus. When God saved Jesus, so to speak, by resurrecting him from the dead, he was saving every single human being because Jesus is a corporate personality. Jesus is everybody in one package. So every single human being, whether it be Christian, Muslim, Hindu, bad word, cursor, adulterer, every God person is wrapped up in Jesus, now live in Jesus in heaven. That's the gospel, you know. The worst man, the murderer, even Hitler who killed millions of Jews. Live in Jesus because Jesus is corporate humanity. He is humanity in one package. And the miss says so, you know. A Romans 5 says so. So we're going to go home and read Romans chapter 5. Read Matthew 1 to 5. Read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14. If one man died, then everybody did. The Bible says that everybody in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5. 15, 16, 17, and 18. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And when you read in the Greek, you're passing the Greek, it even comes clearer than what the English is giving. That everybody was in Jesus and reconciled in Jesus. So everybody is already saved in Jesus. Oops, 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 oops. Heresy, heresy, heresy. Mm. Yes, everybody is saved in Jesus. However, However, it does not mean that everyone will be saved. Why? Delivery is only accomplished upon reception. In other words, you are in Christ. The gift is there, but you need to accept it for it to become effective in your life. In your experience. In other words, the food is on the table. It's your food. But you're going to stay hungry if you don't eat it. The money is in the bank for you. But you're not going to get the benefit unless you accept it by faith. So the good news of salvation is that in Christ, the entire human race is saved. However, there is need to accept, and that's where now our faith comes in. Mm -hmm. I hope I've answered that clearly. 
But it makes a lot of difference when we recognize this because you know there are more implications than what I've said. It makes a lot of difference. It's a total change to the dynamic when we understand that we are all saved in Jesus Christ. Huh? Any more questions? Sister McLean, are you ready? Oh, we're still not hearing you. If it's possible, you could type in the question and then Dr. Bardo will be able to read and respond. Yes, and those who may not ask the question, you may type it as well and you know, we will try and answer you. Okay, we have Mr. Beach, David Beach. Yes, Mr. Beach, please. Okay, I'm David Beach, I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> in essence, what you're saying is that salvation is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because it is available through Jesus Christ, anyone who would want to receive salvation has got to play a part by putting his faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. But I'm also saying, and what Paul is saying is that when you put your faith in Jesus, you don't turn around and give credit to that faith. Because that faith is the only means of accepting, not the cause why you are saved. So there is no value in your faith itself. But you must still do it. You must accept. Yeah. It, 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 it makes, it's very important why it is pitched from this anger. You see, it avoids legalism and uh, it, it removes the law you know, and, and from the identity marker function. But in simple terms, you're correct by the breach. Okay. We have Sister Suzette with a question. Right. Go ahead, Sister Suzette. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can I'm hear you. Right. No, just sharing an experience. There was a time in my younger Christian life when yes. I evaluate myself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that made me very frustrated. Sometimes I, I, I can't believe that, you know, I ask the Lord, Lord, at the beginning of the day, help me not to do so and so. And then, I, you know, I would have done the same very thing. And it leaves me very, very frustrated. And I was, you know, kind of hard on myself, not realizing that if I am, I've learned that dear my thank God for dear my, that once I'm connected to Jesus, that mm -hmm. His righteousness is enough for me. Amen. Because what I was doing is, is trying to be to be righteous by doing the right thing. And I can't do that. I now realize that once I'm connected to the source, which is Jesus, his faith in God will mm. save me. There mm. may be times that I disconnect myself. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit will you know, show me that I am disconnected and I will ask him to connect me back to him, the Holy yes. Spirit. And I just want to give God thanks for DMI because you teach us how to understand the Bible. And that is what God wants us to do, to, to serve him with understanding. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Sudet. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any other comments? Come in, dear my members, you have been studying this for three years now. Bear a witness to the world. Say something to Susan so people know that your father has been doing this all along and you help to clarify and ask the questions. So come in, but dear my members. I don't want to call your name, but I may have to call some names before we wrap. Sister Andrew? Um, I, I think it is significant to point out the situation with many different versions of the Bible because there are um, several versions that um, use the term in Christ. Thank you. Whereas others uh, say of Christ. So can you clarify that? Good. That's the reason why. That's the reason why I put the Greek on the board, whereby I was bypassing the versions. And the King James version got it right, 
it says the faith of Christ. And uh, the others got it wrong. There's something that we learn that translation of the Bible in English is sometimes incorrect. And that's the reason why you learn the Greek and the Hebrew so that you can go right back to the original and get the proper translation, the proper interpretation. So that's what I was doing this morning. I could not just depend on the English because some English person at RSV, NASB say faith in Christ and other versions are the King James, the faith of Christ. But when we plumb and bypass the English back to the Greek, we can have the correct understanding. Thanks, for, thank you very much for that. Did I see another hand? Yes, uh, hand? Richard, Richard Smith, Smith. Richard. Richard. go ahead. No, I, yes, um, good morning to everyone. Yes, Pastor Moses. Realize that you have been making a distinction, Dr. Baldwin, between the faith of Jesus and our faith in Jesus. Yes. And, you know, a lot of questions are surrounded around those two concepts. But I'm saying, looking at Galatians 2 verse 16, yes. I think we can see those two concepts coming out. It should, um, sure. Galatians 2 16 says, mm -hmm. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. So that's mm -hmm. Jesus' faith. The, the, the meritorious cause of our salvation. Yes. It continues. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus. Thank you. So that would identify our faith, yes. which is the means of accepting our salvation. Yes. And then it continues to identify again the faith, the of, faith Christ, of Jesus. Christ. Very good. Very good. So the, 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 connect, the, 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 the connection is there and the distinction yes. is there, right? Yes. So it is said that they are inseparable, but they are distinguishable. Mm -hmm. huh? You can see the distinction and you can see the connection. Huh? The, the, I, I really thank you for that. Verse 20 has the same combination as well. Huh? I have been crucified with Christ. No longer I will live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, that is, the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Yeah? The, the, I have it on the screen in the PowerPoint. The, the, the last phrase in verse 20, I live by the faith, that is, the faithfulness of Jesus. And the Greek brings it out even clearer. Very, very interesting. Thanks for that contribution. Appreciate that. Did you want to elaborate some more? Is there something else? No, no, no. That, that was the point I wanted to make. Okay. <laughs> Great. Great point. Great point. How are you in time, Sister Lisa? Sister Candice? I think we're, almost, we're about to wrap up. Any final mm -hmm. questions or anything else anyone would like to Any share? Any final questions? Let me go back to my slide, then, uh, how do I get back on the screen, Sister Lisa? Share screen. Okay, let me just go back to my slide and then uh, just finish up with some more of the implications uh, up the next few minutes. Okay, slide not moving, it's frozen. I think you missed the screen, Sister Lisa. Okay. Some implications. Implications, our righteousness before God is a person. When we say we are justified by the faith of Jesus, it makes our righteousness before God the very person of Jesus. And Jesus is full 100% righteousness. Therefore, his 100% righteousness is credited to us. And then we come back again to Galatians 2.16. That's exactly what Paul is saying. Therefore, Okay? Oh. For those who may not know this slide, I just run through it again. It gives such good assurance of salvation. It's understanding the whole business of the faith of Jesus versus faith in Jesus. 
This is what it is talking about. Let's imagine that 100% righteousness is all the righteousness there is. Jesus is 100% righteous. God, of course, is 100% righteous. However, separated from Jesus, all of us on this side, whether we be white, black, brown, pink, or yellow, we are 0% righteous apart from Jesus. Uh, but Jesus is 100% righteous. When we accept Jesus now, and here is a line connecting us to Jesus, his 100% righteousness becomes ours. Mm? So that's what Paul is saying. We are justified by the faith of Jesus. It means his 100% righteousness becomes ours. And if that is the case, it means that we stand saved now. We stand justified now in the present. We are citizens of heaven now in the present. We are accepted 100%. We are seen as perfect in the present of eternal life now. Although not 100% righteous in terms of our actions, we still enjoy a status of 100% righteousness before God. Yes, Sister Susan was pointing out, there are some times when you're standing sort of straight up. Then other times you make some mistake and you're falling down. Other times you make some mistake and you fall down even worse. Other times you make mistakes and you're way down. But guess what? You're always 100% righteousness. Righteous once you are covered with the blood of Jesus. Once you're under the umbrella of Jesus. It's good news. It's assurance of salvation. And that's why Paul was trying to communicate to his people and say, listen, the law here now, which used to go be the go-between between Jew and Gentile, the law has been replaced by a person, Jesus on the cross. Therefore, Gentile Christians need to become Jew. Therefore, Peter need to separate yourself. Therefore, justification of our works of law. Therefore, the identity marker is no longer the law. The identity marker is a person. Our righteousness before God is a person, Jesus himself. That which represents our righteousness, Paul is saying, is not the law, is not circumcision, is not the priest, is not the temple, is not a day. It is a somebody. And that makes a lot of difference. I pray God, as we understand this, we see the corporate significance and also the individual significance. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if justification was through the law, Christ died to no purpose. Galatians 2.21. That is the RSV. The King James Version said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. I thank God for the gospel. I thank God for Jesus. Do you? Certainly. I hope you've enjoyed this week's study. And there is much more to learn. I invite you to visit on Facebook and also on uh, dikayema.com and other places where the study will be uploaded. Listen to, a, listen to it again and learn some more. The Lord bless you real good. Thank you so very much for sharing with us today. Thank you for following today's broadcast brought to you courtesy of Dikayoma Ministries International. You can follow us on Facebook at Dikayoma Ministries International or on YouTube at Clinton Baldwin. Make sure to like our Facebook page today so you can receive updates, ministry information, and to be able to view future broadcasts. On behalf of Senior Pastor Dr. Clinton Baldwin and the team at Dikayoma Ministries, we wish you God's blessings and look forward to having you next time.